Hi, within this lecture, we're going to see what is an SUID. So far, we have been working with the SUIDs and we have leveraged that permission in order to gain a privilege escalation or escalated privilege. In the previous CTFs that we have sold during this course, but as I said before, uh, we're going to see in much more detail right now. So I said, don't worry about this, we're going to see what it is later on and we're going to deep dive um, in the privilege escalation section. So the time comes, okay, now we're going to see it. So I'm going to search for SUID in Google, okay, and you can just um, select any of the tutorials over here and you don't have to do that by, um, by now, I'm just showing you a tutorial so that you can see that you can find it anywhere in the internet okay so as you can see um set owner user id or suid okay so it stands for set owner user id is a special type of file permissions given to a file okay so it's basically it is a special type of file permission so and normally when a linux program runs it inherits access permissions from the logged in user. So SUID is defined as giving temporary permissions to a user to run a program with the permissions of the file owner. So what does this mean? When you create a file or when you just uh, put on a binary or some kind of executable, you can choose who gets to write it, who gets to read it and who gets to execute it in Linux. So, of course, if you are root, you can just read, write or execute anything you want in the system. You can just uh, give the special type of permission to yourselves or uh, you can make it available to a single group or you can make it available to a single user as well. Right now, we're going to see how it works. So my IP address is this and I'm going to SSH into it. Of course, during this course recordings, I have to close this down and open it one more time. So that's the case. I'm going to log in as usual. OK, and I'm going to clear this up. So here you go. Right now, I believe we are in the file permissions, which is task 13 over here. But you don't have to follow it from there. It's just there for not taking reasons. So if I run LSLA, I can see a lot of information uh, which is very valuable to us, I think, because we can see whether it's a directory or file over here. So D stands for the directory. OK, if you see a dash it's file. So over here we can see the permissions. OK, so the last part, this is the highlighted part over here, stands for the user and the first one is the owner. OK, and the second one, second third bit is the group. So uh, owner, group and the user. So over here we see who created that file or who does that file belong to. So this file belongs to root. As you can see, this directory I mean belongs to root. And we can see all of those things in LSLA. OK, so this stands for read, write, execute. OK, so this is a directory. This is a file. OK, so this file is created by user and user has given read, write permissions, not execute permissions for bash history. Of course, it doesn't make sense to give execute permissions for a single file like that. Uh, but again, in this case, for example, we see it has the read, write, execute X stands for execute over here. So the group user group can read, but not write but also execute and um, the all the old users over here can read not write but execute over here okay so we can specify which user can do something with a file like uh, if it can read it if it can write it or if it can execute it for example maybe you have seen this before you can run chmod plus x in order to make a file executable okay so that you can just uh, write chmod uh, plus s in order to give a suid permission 
So over here, we don't see any SUIDs right now, but I'm going to show you, don't worry about it. If we see an S over there in the permissions settings, then it means that an SUID permission is given to us. So this may lead us to execute a file or just do something with a file uh, with a root privilege or with an administrator privilege so that we can um, take leverage of that. So I'm going to find some files over here and we have seen this command before. I'm going to search for file types and for the permissions. I'm going to search for um, O4000. Okay. And I'm going to go for LS over here and I'm going to write the output in dev null. You have seen this command before, but I, I actually recommend to take note of this because you will actually need this in real pen tests as well. So over here we see the S because these are the SUIDs. Okay, so S stands for the SUID permission. So this is kind of a special temporary permission that has been given to us. So what does it mean? we get to use those binaries and it happens so that uh, a lot of, of these files are actually binaries and SUIDs are given generally to binaries, not necessarily, but um, it doesn't make sense to give some kind of a text or string file uh, an SUID permission and over here we have a lot of executables like chain shell, sudo, uh, sudo edit, password, um, and so many others as well. So having this permission isn't a vulnerability and isn't a necessarily vulnerability, okay? But over here we have a suite SO. This is a shared object and this is uh, obviously put over here for some kind of CTF purposes. So uh, maybe we can just uh, leverage this and escalate our privilege. We're gonna see how it works, but over here, what is important is that you run this command and you see what kind of permissions do you have for SUIDs and you take a look at every executable that you see. Um, if you find one that belongs to root, and in this case it belongs to root for every possible scenario over here, and try to find a way to escalate your privilege. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to escalate your privilege using chain shell for example but maybe it will be possible by uh, using any of this like this suite so over here okay so you now know what is an suid and how to search for it and now we're gonna see how to actually become root using the vulnerable binaries over here so in this case um it belongs to root as you can see and for the group we have the staff over here i don't know what it means so we're gonna see if we can actually take leverage of that so this is again one of the most important commands that you should take note of uh, if you see something like this in a ctf or a pen test that's the way that you should go so i'm gonna stop here and continue within the next lecture